Hey, what's up, y'all? You've got Michael here, uh, creative director at JD's Finish Line, uh, back with another episode of Community Voices. Uh, we've got a special guest today, um, style icon, stylist, DJ. Uh, we got noodles here. Um, yeah, how you doing today? I'm doing great. Um, the sun's out. We're alive. <laughs> Good, good. Um, yeah, we're really stoked to have you here, bringing that positive energy, um, that female perspective that, um, you know, people from the AAPI community, especially in this month right now. So, you know, um, you know, before I keep going, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. I, I know that, you, you know, you started off as a, as a stylist, but, um, you know, you've, you've ventured into the music world. Yeah. Um, so I went to fashion school. I got my bachelor's degree in visual communications, and that's when I started styling. I worked for an e-commerce streetwear site called Karma Loop for about two years. And then when they went down, I moved to LA and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I still love DJing. I've been DJing since I was 15 and I had always been doing it on the right. side. So when the opportunity presented itself when I moved to LA, um, Kaylani, she's an R&B singer from Oakland, she asked me yeah. to be her official tour DJ. So that's when I started to get the taste of full-time DJing, on the road, DJing like the craziest parties. And here I am, now I'm an, my own artist. I've done my own solo tour, it's fun. And that's that. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh Growing up in the Bay Area, there was a lot, a lot of people, a lot of faces like us that were in that DJ scene. Like I look back and, you know, I think they like the scratch pickles and, and moving on from there. Like, yeah. who were some of your influences? Some of my influences growing up was a DJ named Shortcut. He's a big scratch DJ. Um, Miles Medina, yeah. J.S. Spinoza, all scratch DJs. They're all like gold, the three style champions. And like, I'm... I'm very moved by them. Like, yeah, yeah, shout I out to Shortcut. Them. Exactly, Shortcut, Miles, you know, shout out to all the Filipino legends, Qbert, all them. And like, um, my dad was a DJ, so that's how I oh, actually right got into it. So he taught me on vinyl records with like spinning disco and funk songs. And he was DJing up in the club. He met my mom out there. They've been married for 28 years. So I'm kind of just like, music's just always been in my life. So I, I'm really blessed to be able to do this full time. Yeah, and to be a female in the space, it, it's you know, um, I, I think that it, it's it's something that it's it's nice for young females to see that you know you can make it. Oh, for sure, especially being like Asian American, like it's very, um, you know, our parents has always taught us to like go into being a nurse or like be a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. But it's nice that I my parents accepted me for doing this, so it's great. Yeah, you know, as we start moving. Um, into a more like social justice time and people, you know, the world's getting smaller and we're able to get our message out there um, a lot easier. You know, wh what does the uh, AAPI uh, Heritage Month mean to you? Um, AAPI Heritage Month, what it means to me is basically being proud of where you came from. You know, there is a difference between being Filipino versus Filipino American, but what the yeah. difference is like you tie those cultures that you know, my parents are immigrants, so when they came out here, they made sure to teach me, like, what it is to be Filipino, and anytime this month hits, it hits home. Um, I feel like my parents have always told me that you need to be proud of your brown skin, you know, like, I don't look like these light skins, or it's, it's not, you know, how color isn't such a big thing in, like, like, the Philippines, and, you know, Filipinos are always looked at as, like, service workers, or always looked down upon, and so, um, I love being Filipino, and that's, I do too. that's really what this month has taught me to be. <laughs> yeah, 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 and it's something, you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't think that we celebrated as much uh, growing up, at least from an outward perspective. Um, you know, I think within our own homes, we were able to do that, um, but what does it mean now, like, to be able to celebrate, you know, not just with your, like, a Filipino family, but with, like, the world? Um, with the world, it's cool, like, people are more open these days i have a lot of like non-asian friends that i'll take that have never had filipino food and they're like oh my god i've never had this in my entire life and like that spark then when you see like oh yeah this is like a real cultural dish you know they use the same spices and everything and it's this is i love it it's i love teaching people about my culture that's awesome 
Um, you know, on a serious note, you, we've seen a rise and, you know, I don't even know if it's a rise. Like, I think it's just more light sh uh, shown on like the, the Asian hate that is happening. And, you know, I, I think it's an important message for, you know, not us to be quiet, not a, a, our community to be quiet, but um, how has it affected you personally? And um, what are some changes that you don't want to see happen? I mean, I've saw, I've seen a lot of changes. I'm really thankful my timeline has, like on my socials, we're very vocal about it. I'm really yeah. glad that everyone's been standing in solidarity with all of us. Um, I, I think it's disgusting how people are retaliating against, especially the older Asian community. I think it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. You need to respect your elders. That's how we were brought up in this world. Um, you know, Asians have been suppressed since like the twenties, like, yeah. Japanese internment camps and like all of these things that like the Chinese exclusion act like it's just it's always been rooted in history that Asians have just always been suppressed and it just sucks that it's like there has not been any change lately you know but I think luckily with our generation everyone's talking about it everyone's raising awareness about it I love how no one's being silent about it and that's the only way like we can make change is if people jump on board and just see how wrong it is you know there's it's a humanitarian issue so that's literally what it comes down to yeah yeah absolutely and you know how's your um your, your personal family um been affected by it or like how, how do you talk to them oh yeah my parents especially when the blm movement was happening you know like yeah. that was a tough conversation to have because it's always been rooted in Asian culture, especially with our parents that, you know, they're not like racist or anything, but like there are certain things where I had to check my parents on, you know, um, when anyone of color comes around, you don't need to like react as if they're going to attack, you know, like, and my mom, especially now with this going on, she's way more aware of her surroundings. I always tell her, I'm like, I worry about them because they're getting older. And I've actually bought her pepper spray because I was like, you know, I don't know if anyone's going to come out of the woodwork. It's crazy how that's what it comes down to. But it's, you know, um, raising awareness brings preparedness. So like, that's just what it, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have a message for the uh, younger generation that's, that's coming up? Yeah, I mean, I think it's be vigilant. Also, um, I think showing silence really shows a lot of counterproductiveness. Like yeah. people need to talk about it. I don't care if you think it's got, you're going to lose followers because since this new generation is so obsessed with, you know, TikTok and followers, it's like, yeah, yeah, sure. oh, it's it's like you need to state what's right and even if you don't think you're saying the right thing not saying anything is not doing anything so you you have to put your friends on call your racist friends out and that's all it comes down to yeah i, I want to celebrate artists like you like who who are you looking at that, that's coming up uh, and that that's you know with that brown skin and that, that's got that voice and and, and be able to being able to like shine a light and, and positivity, like the just you know not just the um, uh, reflection on on the Asian hate, but just the positive like energy coming out. Yeah, uh, one of the artists I've been really listening to lately is this artist named Joyce Rice. She's half Japanese and black. She's just a spark of joy. She enters the room. You just love talking to her. She's very. She looks at you in your eye when you talk to her, and her music's phenomenal. You know, another artist I've been listening to is this artist named Yeek. He's Filipino American. He makes like indie, um, alternative, soothing music, and um, yeah, I think it's cool that he he makes that type of sound because. Usually when it comes to Filipino uh, American artists, they're usually like R&B singers, rappers, which is great. They're all great, yeah. but it's cool to listen to that, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want to spend a little bit of time um, kind of talk about your charity and, and mm -hmm. um, how you found them and how, uh, why you're supporting them. Okay, so the charity I decided to choose was this uh, organization called Sister to Sister. Um, my aunt, and T. Rizal, she basically started this with her coworkers. So she works for a nonprofit organization called Health Right 360, and they focus on numerous amounts of organizations. I'm talking about the Walden House, which focuses on the Tenderloin and SF. These are all Bay Area based um, yeah. organizations. But the Walden House, they focus on homelessness shelters for the 
those who suffer with addiction and they, they provide treatments. Another one that Health Rights 360 focuses on is um, the Asian American Recovery Services. So that's for Asian Americans who are immigrants and they don't really know where to go. They don't have a good health mm. education. So they provide these for free. These are all free. And another one I wanted to point out that they focus with is the Women's Community Clinic. So that's for women who suffer with uh, abuse or um, don't have the right resources or health insurance. They provide all of this at their clinic to help women um, who suffer with transgender stuff or um, HIV testing, all that good stuff. But Sister to Sister, I wanted to focus on Sister to Sister because um, they are 100% funded by the workers who work for Health Right 360. And that means this is all off a of voluntary base. And Sister to Sister was founded in 1995. They focus on AAPI young women who are from the ages of 12 to 18 years old. And uh, they stuck really close to my heart because I actually used to attend their organizations when I was 12 years old. My mom was working three jobs and my auntie Rizelle would always take me to their workshops because she would just be like, I think you, you should work on your social skills, you know, meet little girls that look like you. And they're here to empower these young women and bring in keynote speakers to inspire these girls who lack ambition, who lack self-confidence, who don't know what it's like to be Asian American and what their heritage comes from. So, um, I really, really, really love this organization because it goes directly to the community. I know exactly where this money is going to go towards and I know it's going to go towards cool resources for these young girls. Like, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep rambling because I just oh, really love the organization. Yeah, your passion is awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like um, the guest speaker when I attended was Jocelyn Enrique. She's a Filipino artist. And right, yeah, yeah. she shared her story and I was like, oh my god she works in the music industry like i want to be like her and then it's like down the road i'm like holy i'm doing that you know like i'm yeah. in it so um it's just it feels so good to like be able to give back to a community that played such a like big role in my upbringing and you know now it, it just it feels good <laughs> yeah 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 shout out to uh teacher zell man yeah um so well, what can the uh community do to get involved with these uh, uh, charities? Um, I mean, like I said, they're 100% thrown by um, the workers. Like, you can donate, you can get involved, um, you could read on the websites, bring your daughters if you're in the Bay Area. You know, I think that's the cool thing. They're getting bigger as it goes. Um, they've actually been doing virtual uh, Zoom calls with the young girls and their reach is getting really big since it's like, now open worldwide. They had people from Japan attend their Zoom meeting. So that was kind of cool to uh, learn about. And um, yeah, if you would like to get involved with the young kids, listen, the kids are the future. I will always kids take the future. care of the kids. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Well, you know what? I mean, after talking to you, um, it, it's my honor to um, provide $10,000 from uh, JD Finish Line and our friends at Puma um, to these organizations. And, you know, I hope that um, the money can go and, and, and help all of these causes. And I, I thank you so much for advocating for them, um, advocating for the community. And it's been like amazing talking to you. This is like my highlight of the day. I feel good. Um, I'm, I got that energy. So Michael, same goes. And honestly, it's so appreciated. Like it's always, it always comes down to giving back to the community, especially where you come from, you know, like no matter how big you get, you always got to come back and bring it down to family and where you're from. So that means so much. I appreciate everyone from Finish Line and Puma for doing this. It really means a lot and it's going to help a lot. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time out of the day. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful week and uh, hopefully we'll chat soon. Yes, we will. We'll see each other soon. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Noodles.